What's up? It's Johan, once again, Yo Math Study, here to talk more math, but today we're gonna talk about bad math teachers. Why would I talk about that, right? I'm a math teacher myself, believe me, I have empathy and sympathy for all the teachers out there, but we gotta talk about the bad math teachers and probably some ways that you can spot one. So stay tuned, stick with me, and let's get into it. Today's topic, bad math teachers. Most everyone has had a bad math teacher at some point in their life, if not consecutively. It might have started in elementary school. When you're teaching elementary school, you have to be a generalist. And if you already don't really like math, that energy might seep through. And you might find math teachers way more reliant on math games and certain things to make math fun for younger kids. But at that point, what happens is the idea is that math is supposed to always be fun. Problem solving is not always fun. It can be stressful at first. And that's why I try to coach people through their math anxiety, because if you can't get through that stress, then it makes it harder to deal with the problem. Problem solving can be very stressful because there's a lot of anxiety involved in trying to solve a problem at first, especially if you're not sure what to do or if you find yourself getting the wrong answer or if you're making a mistake or anything like that. And so when you see that happening to a younger child that may be five, six years old, you don't wanna stress them out. There's a lot more memorization, game playing, things like that. There are ways to kind of let kids know, younger kids know that if they make a mistake, it's okay. When you have teachers that kind of avoid helping kids go through that process of persevering through the stress, disliking it, but still helping them through, then the teacher themselves might see their own issues reflected and help the kid kind of avoid it. So that's what happens in the younger stages. And, and it's not that they're necessarily a bad teacher, but it's not good math teaching to constantly redirect the kid away from really untying the knot of a problem. The next level comes around middle school. Quite frankly, usually around sixth, seventh grade is when most kids have trouble with math and they end up tanking and usually math teachers have trouble at that point making it fun but also making it direct. You'll see that a lot in textbooks. Textbooks are often a lot drier. They try to relate to the kids but it doesn't really work. Then you try to introduce them to more abstract ideas like algebra solving for X and that's when it becomes way more confusing. You also have uh, developmental issues in a sense where usually around that time is when kids start developing their long-term thinking. And so they don't really know the importance of having a plan before doing the problem, taking notes, that kind of coaching. A lot of it becomes sink or swim by middle school because then we're trying to get them into the best math they can be for high school. And by high school, it's really a rat race. If they've had bad study habits in middle school, then it translates over into high school. It goes on from there. And at that point, a lot of math teachers kind of, it, it is what it is, but it's a process. How can you spot a bad math teacher? For parents, I would advise if you can ever talk to the teacher about how they teach math, if you get a sense that they try to help the kids avoid that resiliency, if you find that they spend way more time on just speed, probably not the greatest math teacher. I don't wanna judge anybody for their process. Like I said, I've, I've seen how it translates over into later. Middle school math teachers, I would usually say that by that point, if you don't understand something, by about sixth, seventh grade, the kids should start advocating for themselves and saying, I'm not quite sure I understand, and maybe they wanna to talk to the teacher later. But more than anything, you wanna ask the teacher if they have at least one or two other ways of explaining it, one or two other ways that they can relate the idea with, especially when it's something more abstract, when you get into pre-algebra and algebra. And then in high school, I mean, it depends. I never want to give too many hardcore standards on what a math teacher should or shouldn't do, but you'll definitely know that you're having an issue if that teacher, I would say, 
doesn't have other ways of explaining things and seems to never really offer themselves or offer help. Yes, you can get a tutor outside of school, but I do think that teachers have to first put themselves forth to make sure that their students understand the material, make themselves available. I challenge other teachers out there, whatever you teach, especially in math, to find different ways of explaining the concepts and make sure that you serve as an example for your students on that resiliency. Oh, maybe one other thing. You don't really have a good math teacher if they insult your intelligence, if they say that you're just not good at it or you're dumb or they do anything to retort your inability to think the way that they think you should, especially when you're being put on the spot. I never advise for any teacher to do that and I never advise for anybody to stand for that. Please make sure that your teacher is not using abusive language, that's for sure. Anyway, that's the topic for today and stick with me as we talk about a little bit more and make sure you subscribe.